recording is being recorded. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. We missed you, and we hope you had a wonderful time with your friends and family over the break, over the holidays, to enjoy each other and enjoy what the Lord is doing for you in the season and even in the new year uh, that is now upon us. And so, hello. We, we did. We really missed you guys. Um, and just a reminder that on Sundays, we have Riding the Storms, and that is at 6 p.m. Eastern. Every Wednesday is Rise Up at 7 p.m. Eastern. And just a quick, a quick recap is that Rise Up is dealing with the questions and answers um, that are applicable to faith and different topics that are put up, and those are going to start going out again. So you can fire away with your questions on the website at kingdomlivingwithjesse.com. And the Sunday Riding the Storms is helpful for the application of your faith through life's trials and tribulations that you can walk through victoriously and successfully. And Jessie gets to share a ton from her. It's like Jessie's back pocket of her experience and chaplaincy and, and just everything from her walk as a daughter of the Most High God. And... Um, a reminder for those that had signed up before um, for the courses by the end of the year, the coaching session is going to be toward the end of the month of January. So you will be reached out to about that. And um, for those that are interested in the coaching session, well, this is kind of two part because we've got the new set of courses that you're going to have. Um, but before we get to that, if you are interested in those coaching sessions, your next opportunity is going to be at the end of March. So there'll be a new period of time with which to sign up for the courses in order to be eligible to participate in one of those coaching sessions, which those have been yeah. so much fun. Definitely. We've gotten a lot of good questions and the whole purpose is to go through the course and then go back. Um, bringing your questions, any things that you didn't understand, um, bringing up maybe challenges or, um, you know, ideas that you have to present that uh, really help to put the material into practice. So, um, you know, we're really wanting to engage in living what God has us to live um, in the kingdom life that, you know, is his heavenly kingdom. So I really encourage people, um, if you've been enjoying this material, uh, I encourage you to get the course. Uh, you definitely will want to get it before the next one is launched. Uh, we're looking at early spring uh, for the next course launch. And uh, that one's going to be really power packed, super exciting. Um, you know, the foundations is just the basics. You know, it just teaches us kind of, it's more introductory to the different topics. Um, in the next course, we're really going to dive in, you know, especially as to our identity. Um, who are we as the bride, the priest, the son of the living God? What um, or how does it look to really live in that identity? And what are the things that we're called to do? Um, how do we go about doing the different things that God has called us to do in those different roles? Um, that then becomes kingdom living and application. So um, mm -hmm. just to give you guys a taste of that, uh, one of the things that we're going to look at is, you know, in this kingdom, God, as sons of God, he's given us the authority to uh, rule, to reign, to have seats in his court. Um, part of that involves being a steward of what he's given us. Um, so we're going to get into what are the kingdom currencies? How do we um, balance those in practicality? And um, for example, one of the things is, you know, have you wondered about, you know, why maybe some of your prayers take a longer time to answer? And I would propose that that's because it's the type of kingdom currency that is being applied and um, one of those currencies deals with gates and pastures. And so with that, um, you know, with a pasture, we'll call it a pasture crop. Um, it's something where the ground has to be tilled. You have to have the seed to sow. After you've sown the seed, you have to tend the crop, uh, weeding, pruning, 
uh, making sure it's watered and has its nutrients. And then there's a time for harvesting that crop. So sometimes our prayers take a while to answer because it's a, it's a pasture mm -hmm. crop. So the fruit takes time. And, and with that, you have to be willing to labor and travail and um, toil in order to produce that crop. If you don't go through the process, you end up without, without a crop that uh, you can enjoy. So uh, that's just one of the kingdom currencies that we're going to get into in these next set of courses. So that is very exciting. There are so many students in the body of Christ. And what seems to happen sometimes is you load up all of these notes, you know, when you're listening to sermons, listening to teachers, and it's like, but you have to grab it. You have to dig into it and uh, learn and apply it to actually, it's not just like, poof, here's all your authority. I mean, yes to Jesus, give that to us, yes, but you need to learn how to use your kingdom bazooka. And so right. signing up for these courses, you, you know that you're fully dressed and what you need, and then you can, it's line upon line, precept upon precept, and you can actually move in action with the things that you have in the kingdom. That's right. Yep. Oh, it's so, it's so exciting. So make sure that you're going to the website, watching for that kingdomlivingwithjesse.com. Um, that's very, very exciting. And um, today's episode is very exciting. And just a little teaser that there will be a partner episode over on Riding the Storms. So you're gonna make sure that not only do you catch this one, but make sure to catch uh, the one on Sunday, uh, Riding the Storm, so that it will partner along with it. Uh, and so today's topic is the idols in your pantry. Oh my, nobody ever wants to open up their pantry and show the world what's in there. <laughs> no, because you know why? There's going to be spices from 1982 in there. <laughs> right. Like, what is it anyway? It's in there. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. And sitting in there, stored, stocked. We used it once and never again. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of the same thing with idols, you know? Um <laughs> Which brings us to the first part of our conversation, you know, what is an idol? Uh, in definition, an idol is basically a, a false god. It's something that we've set up as a god in our lives. Um, it can happen all throughout our life. You know, maybe there were things as we were children or young adults we set up um, as idols. And then, you know, we were really into it. Uh, we think that, eh, you know... This really isn't my thing. We shove it in that pantry. We close the door and we forget about it, you know, but the fact is, is that if we haven't disposed of those idols properly, the Lord has not forgotten about it. And those idols can leave uh, doorways and access points and footholds into our life that can continue to affect um, the fruit that God wants to bear in our lives, as well as the good works that he's prepared in advance for us to do. So um, it's important, you know, to really get in there. We're going to do uh, the, um, the double episode to this will be cleaning out your pantry, how to do that. Uh, so when we get down to the nitty gritty of this, um, you know, basically the Lord in Exodus 20 uh, verses 2 through 17, he establishes the, the basic commands that we are to live by. And the very first few, um, you know, he's very straightforward. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not bow down and worship other gods you shall make no graven image of anything in heaven or on earth and bow down and worship it. So pretty straightforward. You shall not. <laughs> um, very strong wording. Um, so I want, I want to really just break this down because, you know, many times I know like when I was growing up, you know, I, I had this the concept of what an idol was just because of 
you know, the stories that I heard in the Old Testament. And, you know, I would see it as, you know, a wooden, a rock, a, you know, something that was hewed and hewed out of stone or wood and was formed um, into this image that then would be set up on a rock and worshiped. But, you know, that picture in my mind did not prepare me for the fact that there were idols in my life and how easy it is to have idols. So, you know, it, it's not just something that is made of wood or stone. And I think what's important is that we realize that an idol is something of this physical world. Um, it, it can even be another being that's attached to something in this physical world. Mm -hmm. And then that something is something that we give place to. Uh, we set it up as something, you know, as a priority, as something more important um, than God. And so at its base, you know, that's how I think I'd like to define a graven image. It's anything that we set in place of um, God and we give, um, you know, as we start to, or we'll just say we elevate it, uh, we put it on a platform and, you know, that platform can be, um, a rock slab, it can be a wood table, it can be a shelf, um, you know, it could be your mind, too. Your mind yeah. too. Yep, something you set up in your mind that you spend all your time thinking about, entertaining thoughts about. Mm. So mm. even, you know, it could be as simple as your TV. Um, it could be, you know, the radio, the music you listen to. Um, could be food. Uh, food is an easy one that we don't think about that, you know, often scripture tells us about, um, you know, food was presented on altars to graven images. That's right. And we set up our food on a table and we can have, you know, a graven image in our mind, um, that then we're worshiping through that food. Um, so, you know, an altar is just simply something that we, a place where we worship. Um, so, you know, altars can be good and they can be bad. Um, you know, a bad altar is going to be any altar that's set up to anything that is not God a good altar is going to be a place where we meet to worship with God. Um, <laughs> worship is an action. <laughs> uh, you know, action could be a thought. We'll, we'll say it could be a thought. You're chewing over something, entertaining that thought over and over. Um, what are some actions you would think that go along with worship? Well, in the in in the sense of worship unto the Lord, you know, singing to Him, dancing, being in prayer, being in um, like contemplation might be just you know like that like meditation over the things that He has said. When you're letting your heart sing before Him with the things that are written on it, you know, from from the Word, like in in that sense, you know, and you're showing adoration and you are in enjoyment with the Lord, delighting in him and, and getting your pleasure from him, from his right hand and not the things of this world. So in the flip side of things, you know, my goodness, that could be uh, going, going crazy town with drugs, alcohol, porn, fill in the blank, something that you're deriving some kind of like a pleasure or a need from when mm -hmm. you're not going to him to the lord for i just it, thought but... of this you know like i guess social media even could be Ooh, an altar one. because I you know, as you were yeah. saying that about the singing the dancing i was seeing you know like i've seen trailers for tiktok um i've seen some oh of the God. things that yes. we were going against with tiktok because the kids would be on there 
you know, video, singing, dancing, but really there's, you know, that promotes an idol to self, um, you know, the raising, the elevating up of self versus of God. So selfies, I mean, right? selfies. I fall into that one. <laughs> Mine was a little different, but uh, I'll have to pray over that one because, um, you know, for me, it was something where I, you know, I hardly ever even took time to ever look at myself. And, um, you know, the Lord was trying to work into me the truth about who I was and that, you know, I was beautiful and um, that I could enjoy mm -hmm. Amen. looking at myself and appreciate the things that he wanted to do through me or how he had made me. So there is a difference. Um, you know, we're not saying that all things are evil or not good. Um, so it's good to distinguish there, but it's how you're using it. Like if you're using it to elevate yourself or to get worship or praise, um, then that's not of God. So yeah. Very important distinction. <laughs> right. Or Very if you're doing that to others. So it gets, you know, you thinking like, you know, do we do that to other people? Do we, you know, elevate their image, promote their image, um, raise them up as, you know, I think like back to when I was in seminary, we would have some professors that were really good at things. And it was like, that was the individual everybody would look to for that specialized form of knowledge. And in, and it got to the point sometimes where instead of seeking the Lord first, you'd be like, oh, I have to go talk to that professor about that. Right. Or I have to yeah. you know, get the answer from them. And we, we use that person then almost as like an oracle where we're getting our direction, our answers, our counsel, our knowledge from them and it's different than seeking you know a counselor like we're scripture mm -hmm. tells us that we should have it's wise to have many counselors mm -hmm. um but there's a difference when you're elevating that individual as the end all answer you know and not mm -hmm. really seeking the lord or or using wisdom in discerning you know the answer the direction that the lord would have you to go wow it's it's such a shortcut it's a sh like it's short cuts and short changes your own process to just automatically do that. And I'm sure that plenty of people and not even with negative intentions towards you at all. I've seen this happen with anyone who's who's gifted uh, in the mm -hmm. Lord that there's that tendency to go. You have the information. You can fix everything. I know if I just ask you, you're going to have the answer. And meanwhile, you're sitting there going, I'm a daughter of the most high God. And I am not a Pez dispenser. Like, please do not. Make I love me the way you said that. Cause you know, as you said that, like, I think, especially those of us who are task orientated, Oh yes. it's very simple to like seek out and look like, what's the task? What do I need to do? What are the yes. steps I need to follow to accomplish the end goal? And a lot of times we are impatient. We don't want to be willing to submit to the process, the mm -hmm. wrestling, the struggling, the, you know, not knowing the answer, the seeking the answer. And that's where it's easy to be drawn into those who are very, you know, strong and forward in their faith. Um, you know, but we have to remember that those people, how did they get there? It came through that relationship and the spending time at the Lord's feet and even if we follow all the same steps that they put out, we're going to end up with a different result if we leave God out of the process. Another one, just mic drop. Be, uh, yeah, massive, massive issue. Uh, it, it, same with the, the whole idea of lay hands on me. And just give me everything that you got. Just impart everything. And it's like there, there are things, you know, walking, walking with the Lord for years. They, there can be revelation. There can be certain things where there's an impartation and somebody just gets it. But there is nothing that can be given that you, you like, it's a process. You have to go through the process. There are no shortcuts. 
and right. oh my goodness wow okay there's just so much more that's so coming true. out of this than i even thought that was today. good oh my god we'll get back to some of that i wanted yeah. to you know talk about you know going back to idols here um you know in the old testament it's very clearly shown you know where these were not just we'll say thoughts or things that they were doing i mean they went to the extent of their devotion to the idol was to create to form that graven image so we see that in exodus um you know where moses goes up on the mountain to receive the ten commandments while he's up there um you know they decide that why is it taking him so long maybe he's not gonna come back Maybe we need to call on God ourself or a God. And they begin to gather and collect, um, you know, gold, jewelry, um, different items that they had that were gold. And they um, started a fire and they melted that gold down um, and made it so that they could form that gold into an image. Um, so I like, you know, kind of really like breaking down some of this concept because, you know, we don't often think through the the process that happens. And I know, you know, if people, if somebody was to come to me a couple of years back and say to me, you know, you have an idol in your life, I'd be like, eh, no, I don't have any images that I've set up, you know, that I'm bowing down to worship. But when you think about the process of it, um, how many things in our life do we have where there's actually a process that we have to think through? Um, you know, a few years back, the Lord showed me, um, you know, one of the idols in my life. Another term for an idol would be a vice, um, but that was coffee. And the thought process that I would have, you know, I would get up in the morning. And it would be like, I can't start my day till I have my cup of coffee. And it then started to become that emotional crutch where, you know, I can't handle whatever is going on until I have that coffee. Um, <laughs> you know, so it became that replacement, like, you know, my peace, my demeanor, everything revolved around that receiving that cup of coffee, um, you know, my ability to cope or handle with things revolved around having that cup of coffee. Um, you know, it was even to the point where it's like, I can't start my day or my Bible time until I have that cup of coffee. And oftentimes it would go hand in hand where I'd have that cup of coffee while I was doing my Bible time. But the Lord saw that in my heart, you know, that I was setting something up above him. And um, so he began to break that through a fast. And I remember some of the questions that he asked me as the fast, the Lord kept extending that fast out. You know, at first it was 21 days, then 30, then another 21. <laughs> and, you know, he'd asked me things like, um, you know, why are you looking to this coffee to be your peace? Am I not enough? Am I not your full peace? Um, why are you looking to this coffee to be your energy and your strength? Is my strength not enough? Is my arm too short for you? And it was like, no, Lord, your arm is more than sufficient. And then the question came, then why do you not turn to me? Um, why do you not seek me and ask me to be these things for you? And, and so, you know, this is what we often see with idols is that they take that place and we begin to turn towards them and, and replace them with, you know, by seeking them and not the Lord. Because his word says that he is our counselor, he is our mighty God, he is um, all that we need, that the spirit of the Lord goes before us, that he is our provider, he is um, 
you know, fill in if you can think of any here, but um, he is our healer. Uh, that's another area where, um, you know, especially during my shoulder surgeries, um, I couldn't have painkillers. They would make me sick. But I had this unmeasurable pain that, um, you know, I couldn't shake. It was like I couldn't even, you know, like I would be just praising the Lord if even the edge of that pain was off because it was so intense. And I went through three years of that with just that high intense level, you know, nine or 10 pain. And I still had to function and do normal stuff during that time, but that pain was just always there and made it so that, you know, I couldn't even really think through things properly. And I would just constantly be crying out, you know, Lord, please lift this pain, lift it. And when he didn't, you know, I began to turn to other things to help me cope through that pain. You know, it's like, oh, if only I had, you know, the, the special oils or, um, you know, that lotion, that rub, um, you know, the ice pack, the heat pack. And when, when nothing would work, you know, it would just leave me um, in this place of, you know, Lord, I don't know what to do, but I can't bear this. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a hard place for many of us to be. And, you know, so pain, um, sickness, chronic illness, all of those things can turn our eyes away from, from the Lord where we start seeking other things. You know what? I don't mean, I don't mean to interrupt here, but it just, it just, really dawned on me that um, going back to you were explaining how the children of Israel uh, took the gold and they they melted it down to fashion the idol and even the process you're describing now it's like how many times in our lives do we take the inheritance God gave us because the Egyptians sent them with their stuff because that's the way God determined that was going to go how many times do we take what God gave us and melt it down into something else and end up going after like some other remedy to the situation just because it's the same thing. It was the timing thing. When is he yeah. coming back? When is Moses coming back? Is he ever when coming will back? It end? Yeah, you're right. I think timing throws that off and even comfort. You know, I think about a lot of people that I work with who have addictions um, you know, what is that base need? They, they need comfort. They need mm -hmm. that emotional resolve to the issue, the stress, um, the emotional abuse, the trauma that they've experienced. So they kind of, you know, alcohol or drugs then become that escape. Um, the temporary, that, maybe that's a better way to define an idol. An idol can be that temporary fix or band-aid that we stick over the deep infected wound um, that gives a momentary resolve, but it doesn't really heal or fix the issue that we're trying to apply to that. So even like, you know, idols or people that we follow on social media sites or things like, like I'm thinking of, you know, all the teenage stars, um, Hollywood, um, musical stars, you know, what are those teenagers really seeking after? They, they want to be noticed. Um, they're lonely. Uh, they want fellowship. And instead of getting that from the Lord first, and then through church or others, they seek these false relationships that are surface level relationships and because they follow that person and know everything about them, they think, oh, I've got this relationship with that individual and, and they're kind of temporarily meeting that need, but it's a false relationship. It's not a true, you know, really they've had no conversations. They don't know how that person feels about them. Um, and so, you know, that idol is temporarily set up. There's so much revelation coming out of you. I just keep sitting back and seeing things as you're talking and thinking, oh my goodness, like how many 
how many things have you just described for all of us? And it's like everyone can just begin going through joint deliverance now because there are so many things defined, you know, even if it's, yeah. even if it's, I, I know mine was cigarettes, like when, when I used to smoke before the Lord delivered me, you know, there, there are so many things. It was, you know, what is that, what is that thing? What is that bandage that goes mm -hmm. over top of the wound that just makes you feel good for one, five minutes? Uh, and, you know, a five minute at a time, you know, we slap yeah. that bandaid on as long as we can get it to stick. And as soon as it becomes unstuck, we do it again, <laughs> thinking it again. that we're going to get a different result. We think, and that's the sad part. We believe and so here's where it goes into that deeper uh, correlation with worship. We believe that our idol will fix the problem or meet the need, Ooh. but it won't. Mm -hmm. It won't. We can only get the healing or the solution through the Lord, and that can only come through relationship. Amen. Oh my goodness. But it, the temptation is, okay, God's not showing up fast enough. He's not doing this fast enough. This isn't happening. And so the temptation Let's is there. Form something. Let's just put the bandage on. You got to stack this high and it's all a festered mess. Ooh, yeah. Well, I mean, not even you think of it. my other favorite story um, on idols is uh, out of first Samuel five. And you had, you know, Israel were at the time, you know, the nations had such a fear of Israel because they knew that when the Israel came with their priests heading first into the battle, carrying the Ark of Covenant, they knew that God was with Israel and that God would go out before them. And oftentimes those battles would be won before Israel even stepped mm -hmm. foot on the battlefield. Um, you know, scripture says that the fear of God went before them and the nations would talk to one another and would say, oh no, they're coming with their God, you know, and uh, they would begin to scurry or they would just start tossing out their treasures to them because they didn't want Israel to conquer them. They were that afraid of God. And, um, you know, and so what happens is that at one point Israel sins and because of that sin, um, the Lord allows the, Phil the Philistines to capture the Ark of the Covenant. And so in pride, they think, aha, now we own their God. And, you know, they march that Ark of the Covenant straight into their, um, you know, their temple house, which, um, you know, in their scripture talks about, you know, idols could be different places, like it could be a slab of rock that was high, you know, built high in the mountain places. It could be a cleft in the rock where they set up images. Um, in Philistine, you know, they set up a temple or a house they built around the altar. And on their altar, they had their god Dagon, who, mm -hmm. you know, was represented kind of like a merman, a uh, half man on top, a fish a tail for the body. Um, and uh, they set the Ark of Covenant in there before Dagon, you know, and, and had Dagon raised up above that Ark of the Covenant. Well, in the morning when they came, Dagon had, Dagon had fallen over. <laughs> and so silly them, they decided to do it again and set Dagon up. And the next day when they came, he had fallen in such a way where he broke his arms, uh, had come off of the idol and uh he was laying prostrate before the ark of god and that's when they knew they needed to get rid of the ark uh because god was not going to be placed within an idol's house um so i love that that you know you've got this imagery in the bible of you know kind of that process that you know, they attempted to set up an idol. They they make a house for it. They made a place for it. Um, so pretty, a lot of meditated thought goes into idol worship. And we may not even realize that we're giving that much thought to it. Um, which then says, you know, that we need to really pay careful attention 
to our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um, what are we saying? And, you know, remember that the Lord hears, he's part of the conversation, whether we're giving him time to speak or not, he's still part of the conversation and he's listening to everything that we're saying and thinking through. And, uh, you know, and there we get into, you know, wh what, where does idolatry lead us? Um, it, it leads us down that road of sin. So imagine the Lord sitting there, hearing our thoughts, seeing our actions, seeing that we're worshiping something else or, or giving all of our time to something else saying, I don't have time for you, Lord. I don't, you know, this is more important. I have to do this. You know, I have to spend my 30 minutes on Twitter, you know, God forbid I miss, you know, everything that's going on there. And instead of taking that time to pray or to, you know, seek him for what his will is for us that day, we find all these other things and make commitments um, that waste our time. And waste our time, our worship, our energy, our strength. Um, and, you know, that's where the first sin, you know, when we do that, it's a sin against the Lord. We cause an offense. He's offended that, that you know, it's not that we don't have time. He's given us 24 hours in a day. The, the truth is that we're not being mindful or good stewards of our time and we're not making time for him. Okay. If you can't say amen, right now is a good time to say ouch, because we're probably all there some way, some way. And we all need to repent. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where the shift comes that we need to repent from that cycle. We need to say, okay, I need to reevaluate my time. And I need to make time for the Lord. I need to make time to, you know, work on my spiritual formation, work on my growth. Um, you know, because we all have the same 24 hours a day. So God's allotted the time to us. It's just how are we spending that? And what happens then is, you know, the sin, the offense against God begins. But then instead of turning away from the idol, um, you know, it's, it's almost like it's a cycle we get sucked into. You know, for me, it, it was, you know, I had to have that coffee for energy, um, for coping, to get through my day. And, you know, I would drink, drink, drink all this caffeine to give me energy, which is that false, you know, go, 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 that false energy. But then what would happen is it would definitely get me, keep me going, but it would keep me going so much that then I couldn't enter into that place of rest right. at night. So then I'm not getting sleep like I'm supposed to. And what happens the next day? It starts all over again. I have to have that coffee, I have to have that idol, and it becomes a we become dependent upon it. And the more and more we become dependent, we start to form these habits. So that's the difference between sin and iniquity: is that iniquity is habitual sin; it's a repetitive sin that we continue to engage in. Um, so that's where you know then our sin is more than just a sin. It begins to form into idolatry because we're constantly um, that repetitive action of worshiping that idol then becomes a stronghold in our lives. And, um, you know, that's how, so here's where then the demonic spirits attached to that idolatry, they gain a foothold. Because we're constantly coming back to that idol to worship at it. And they gain a foothold or access in that and build that stronghold. And many of us don't even know that it's there. 
the stronghold would continue to propel us into the thing. So right. it's like that that influence just allows for faster agreement into going right back to it. Like the yep. dog returns right to the vomit. Yeah, for whatever reason, we're foolish enough to be like, oh yeah, let me do that again. Like, it doesn't work. It's like, like the very definition of insanity. You know, doing the same thing right. over and over and over again, expecting that different result when we need to go to the Lord. <laughs> oh my gosh. And here's the interesting thing the Lord showed me is that we call on the name of our idol. Um you know, think about that as, you know, as I was waking up tired, uh, lack of energy, I would say things like, I have to have my cup of coffee. I've just oh, called on oh. the name of my idol. Um, I, or someone else, you know, I have to have that cigarette. I need a cigarette. I, I need, you know, a painkiller. I need, um, you know, to, to talk to that person on the phone. Um, you know, mm. we begin to call on the name of that idol instead of calling upon the name of the Lord. And what does scripture say? Those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, you know, that action of calling and then we serve that idol. Um, you know, like in my case with the coffee, coffee is a drink offering. So literally, I would be offering a drink offering on this altar of coffee every day, um, you know, multiple times a day. And I would be receiving a transaction from it. But where was the receiving part? Again, it's a falsehood. It, it wasn't from the Lord. I was, I was willingly accepting help from the spirits that were behind that altar. So, you know, looking to strength then to get through my day to help me to cope, who was helping me cope? It wasn't God, it was my idol of coffee. And, you know, these spirits, they don't care if you say their name or not, they're just a bunch <laughs> of unclean spirits, right? So, they will gladly help you to keep, you know, oh, here we are. We've hit that breaking point. Let's go get the second, the third, the fourth. I'm offering the drink offering and don't even realize that I'm engaging in idol worship, um, you know, in that basis. So it, it can be so easy um, to fall prey to this. Wow. Very easy. I, I love how you just outlined all of that because how often, how often do we do that? And 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 say things like that. And and you know, it's the whole life and death is in the power of the tongue, but we're not thinking that even when we're saying like I am fat or I am what like it's or I need to eat. You know, it, yes. I need to eat. I'm yes. stressed. I need to eat. I'm hungry. I need to eat. Um, you know, that Holy that God. stomach can be a God or, you know, I need to work. I need to have money. I need to pay for, that's another one with mammon that we don't even realize I have to pay for this. I have to have money, but then you spend it on pleasures and we just continue that cycle. You know, I have to have this, um, you know, we're serving somebody when we say those things. And the transactional rights that come out of it. Oh, my goodness. I, 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 I once heard, um, I don't know if you're familiar, her, her name is Dr. Trim, Dr. City Trim. But in this one teaching that she did, I remember her saying, you are where you are because you decided to be like you, like you decided yourself into wherever there's the choice. Is. Like we, <laughs> we willingly give permission, even though we don't know we're giving the permission, but, but in engaging in the act of worship and forming the idol, we're willingly um, giving the spirits that come with it permission to have that foothold. <sighs> The more you know, right? <laughs> right? 
<laughs> well, you know, it's the last Ooh. thing I want to bring out about this is, you know, as we understand how an idol works, how it's set up um, in our lives, um, we need to then the next step is that we have to realize the command of God. Um, God is very clear about idols. Um, you know, going back to Exodus 22 through 17, you know, in those first four verses, the Lord says, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not bow down and worship those gods. You shall make no graven image of anything in heaven or earth and bow down and worship it. Um, do you want to read First uh, Corinthians 10? To that, yes. Uh, do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. Yeah, mm -hmm. revelry being another word for rebellion against God. Um, Colossians 3, 5. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires and greed which is idolatry yeah let's go to so you know let's talk about for a minute here some of the stuff we're to put to death um if you want to do galatians 5 19 through 21 uh before you read that i kind of just want to categorize um like when we think about that concept of of rebellion of revelry um, it really goes into three main categories of sin um, that's defined in um, the book of Thessalonians uh, chapter three, where it talks about lawlessness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we're not abiding by God's laws, then we are entering that place of lawlessness. And it says in Thessalonians that, you know, that lawlessness falls into three categories uh, we are lovers of self, lovers of pleasure, and lovers of money rather than lovers of God. Mm. And so when we're loving our self, pleasure, and money, um, that leads to the sins listed in Galatians 5 uh, that form idolatry. And he, um, do you want me to read that now? Yes, please. It's uh, he he starts off in 19 with the acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality impurity and debauchery and then 20 idolatry and witchcraft hatred discord jealousy fits of rage selfish ambition dissensions and factions and then in 21 and envy drunkenness orgies and the like I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's a high price to pay when we think about it. Um, you know, what's at stake is that the Lord has given us the kingdom and we're to be living out the kingdom. I don't believe it's just, you know, once we pass from this earth um, into our final, you know, transformed state you know, that that's where we get to live kingdom. I believe that he says, you know, his kingdom is here in power. It's not just a matter of talk. His kingdom has come in power. It's here with us now. Um, so that's really harsh is that, you know, those who do such things shall not enter the kingdom. Um, so if we want to be entering the kingdom, if we want that fellowship with God, um, within the kingdom, then we have to put to death those things. Um, some of the ones that stuck out for me out of that list you read um, was anger and bits of, and rage. Um, you know, that one resonates. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> for sure. Uh, some oh of the ones God. you wouldn't expect, the hatred. Um, you know how easy that is when, you know, I can remember times with 
my kids when they were little, you know, they'd be like, oh, let's go to so-and-so's house, so -and house. And you'd be like, no, I hate that guy. You know, like it, it just was something I just tossed around where it's like, you know, I meant, well, I don't really like them. I don't want to spend time with them. I'm not going to spend time. But what came out of my mouth was I hate that guy and how dishonoring to the Lord. And, you know, right there, I set up an altar of hatred and the idols that came with it right because what's kingdom living is that we live to build up we live to um display one another's beauty we live to prepare yeah. for one another's good works that god's ordained for them to do and if you have that altar of hatred set up there where you're not engaging in a relationship at all right there you've you're not kingdom living oh my so I, I, everybody is going to be having to do this later <laughs> and, and looking, looking at their path and looking to see like how many altars were, were set up along the way. And, and I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing, not because it's not, because it's not funny, but it's like, it's like so horrifying kind of that all you can do is laugh. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's such wonderful revelation though, but I'm filled with so much joy knowing that all of it can be dealt with you know we weren't we weren't left here on our own to just figure it out you know we have the holy spirit the comforter the teacher who can right. lead us into all truth lead us out of these things like thank you god you know like, <laughs> whew. oh my gosh well, what we need before next uh <laughs> for the next writing um the storms um it is to put into practice uh, the process of evaluation. Um, you know, in the Psalms, David would seek the Lord and he would say, you know, Lord, you know my heart. Show me the things within my heart that are displeasing to you. Um, so I'm going to encourage everybody and give out an assignment this week. Um, you know, every day when you devote yourself to prayer, um, ask the Lord to show you what are the idols in your life. Make a list. And then in the next show, we're going, as we have our list, uh, Tracy and I will do this too. Then we're going to walk you through the how-tos. How do we clean out the pantry and get rid of the idols? So <laughs> it's going to be a great show. Uh, you know, it, it reminds me, it's a lot like deliverance, um, a little different. Uh, deliverance is just a little different than cleaning out the idols, a little bit different process. So, but it, it'll be interesting to see how things go for everyone. So, oh, yes, they're already like the, the list is already forming, which I'm excited because that means identification. It means being able to deal with it. And it means freedom. freedom. It means freedom. freedom, being free from the idols and the spirits that sit on them. Yes, exactly. The idols and the altars. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. How wonderful. How wonderful. And you, it's funny. You said earlier, you know, his you were talking about his kingdom has come and like, and I was thinking that's a great place to just talk about his kingdom comes in power the battle because that's your, your book is just chuck a buck full of just a number of different in, encounters and testimonies and healings and victories in the Lord and, and also going through the process too. Right. Going through the process and not shortchanging um, your own walk and that process of building, because we it yeah. takes we're building up a, an edifice, you know, in the Lord, praying in the Holy Spirit, um, so that we can be joined together with others. So we better get our bricks in order. Here. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we'll get into because you know idols. It's interesting as you look at those. Um, you know, many of us could say that we've experienced some time in our life depression, or we feel that heaviness of mm -hmm. oppression. And it's interesting how scripture brings out um, some interesting concepts. One of them is about the, the glory of the Lord. And 
um, oftentimes that would be described as this weighty heaviness that weighed you down. Um, when we think about that glory, that light, the same thing happens when we, you know, when we're not walking in the light of the Lord and we're walking in the light of idols or the spirits that we're worshiping behind those idols, we get that weightiness, um, that oppression and that depression. The longer we don't deal with the oppression, it turns into that depression where um, the weightiness of that idol that we're worshiping becomes so heavy on us that we can't function. Um, so the good news is we're going to, you know, walk through that process together. We're going to show how to break that yoke, that weightiness of oppression and depression off of us, and how that starts by cleaning out our pantries. Oh, amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Oh, my. So was, it, was there anything else you wanted to share? Or, or I'm like already ready for you to like pray for us. Yeah, let's pray. Oh, prayer time for <laughs> this. Thanks. Oh. oh, Lord Jesus, we just come into your presence, Lord, and we thank you that wherever two or more of us are gathered in your name, that here you are in the midst of us. And Lord, we desire, we want that yoke of oppression to be lifted off of us. We want that depression moved and broken asunder, Lord. We want to come to that place in our lives where we're walking in the joy of the Lord, where we're delighting in you and in one another and, and really knowing what it means to take pleasure in one another. Your word says that we are the apple of your eye, that you delight so much in us. And we desire to do that, to delight in you as well as in one another. So we ask for the release of those things. We ask that as we go through this week, um, show each of us the idols that are in our lives, Lord. Let us not be afraid to bring our idols out of the closet. Let us not be afraid to address them or hide them from one another. The truth is that we all have them. So let us put on our big boy pants and big girl pants and let us take the authority that we have in you which states that as mature adults, we're going to deal with those idols and we're going to do what's right in your eyes to restore um, that right relationship that we really desire to have with you. So as we go through this week, show us what those idols are, help us to make our list uh, so that we can begin to address them um, in this next week. We thank you for all of this, and we pray these things in your powerful and precious name, Jesus. Uh, we just acknowledge you as our great high priest, and we thank you that your word says that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful of those sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that we can be restored to that place of right standing before you and in your house. Um, so we thank you for that and just pray these things in your powerful name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm excited and a little nervous, but it's going to be great. Lord, we trust we you. We all will air our pantries together. So <laughs> yes. we'll get through it. <laughs> the pantry contents are coming out. All the bad seasonings are yeah, they're about to they're about to go. So that's wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Jesse. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. Our extended family, new family, friends and family. Maybe some people are like, that's okay. We love you too. We will see you next time and make sure that you rise up, rise up, rise up. All right. Later. <laughs>